Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When the ME-262 took to the skies for the first time towards the end of World War II, Allied bomber crews and fighter escorts were left in awe at the tremendous speed of these aircraft shooting past them. Since the introduction of the jet engine, the world of aviation has changed forever. From the Messerschmitt ME-262 to the F-35 Lightning II, jet engines need special attention due to their complicated natures. This is the hypnotic process of maintaining the most powerful U.S. fighter jet engines ever made. Initially, the engine removal begins inside the hangar. Before using pneumatic tools to unbolt the engine from the pylons, mechanics disconnect the fuel, oil, and sensor lines. This 3,700-pound engine is pulled from the airframe and transported to repair by Dolly. The technicians completely disassemble the turbofan to replace old turbine blades and seals and verify the rotating assembly balance. F-15 Eagle engine maintenance and repair is a thorough process that ensures peak performance and safety. Using specialized hoists, the engine is safely removed and brought to the service bay. Technicians conduct thorough inspections, focusing on important components such as afterburners, turbines, and compressor blades. Worn or broken components are repaired or replaced. Advanced diagnostic instruments are used to detect cracks and wear. After repairs, the engine is rebuilt and put through rigorous testing, including thrust and performance evaluations. Finally, the engine is reinstalled in the airplane, interconnected, and checked for operational readiness. Engines that have been repaired first need to be tested before being placed back in their aircraft. That is done in a test cell, also known as a hush house. Inside the hush house, engines retrieved from F-15E Strike Eagles are tested rigorously before being reused. Technicians secure the twin spool turbofans on reinforced stands before enclosing them inside the concrete frame. Sensors monitor vibration as the test cell controller gradually revs up the engine to military power. While microphones look for any compressor instability or bearing rattle that could indicate damage. Radar gauges measure thrust levels during several test cycles that simulate flight circumstances, guaranteeing that each repeated power plant passes stringent safety requirements. If successful, these engines will return to flight lines. F-15E Strike Eagles are majorly upgraded F-15Cs, but with an emphasis on the role of ground attack and interdiction. 
These aircraft were first introduced in 1989 and can produce a combined afterburning thrust of 58,320 pounds. That is sufficient to take off with a payload of 23,000 pounds. Their two Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW-229 engines are the same as those used by the F-16 Fighting Falcon. Although the F-16 uses only one. With its power, the F-15E Strike Eagle can reach a speed of Mach 2.5. and fly at 60,000 feet. It can reach 50,000 feet in one minute from the moment it leaves the runway. Unlike the F-15, the U-2 Dragon Lady is a high-altitude ISR aircraft. It was first developed in the 1950s with the belief that flying at high altitudes would keep it safe from anything the Soviet Union had. For that reason, these aircraft were made to be as light as possible, even removing some of its landing gear. After Gary Powers was shot down by the Soviet Union in 1960, it was obvious the idea did not work. First, the U-2 was retired, but later reinstated for modern ISR missions. A maintenance team goes over the U-2, preparing it for flight. Pilots who have flown the U-2 agree that it is one of the most difficult aircraft to fly. Not only is the pilot dressed in a full pressure or space suit, which is bulky, but when taking off, the landing gear under its wings disengages. Pilots can fly up to 75,000 feet, right at the edge of space. But the air is very thin there. If they fly too slow, the aircraft stalls. But if they fly too fast, the aircraft burns up. They have a narrow corridor of flight, which they have dubbed Coffin Corner. Landing the U-2 from that altitude is even more difficult. The pilot has to land the aircraft on bicycle-style landing gear but at least they have a chase car driving behind them and guiding them down via radio. When the U-2 stops, one wing rests on the ground. Nice job, welcome back. Dragon Lady uses a single General Electric's F-118 GE-101, which is the same engine used in the B-2 Spirit strategic stealth bomber. The unique engine situated in the U-2 spy plane's fuselage necessitates specialized handling during installation and maintenance. Crews employ specially designed platforms to reach the intake on the fuselage safely. 
The lightweight yet high output General Electric F118 turbofan is then carefully bolted to a titanium mount and attached to sensors and other lines. This mount helps to insulate the airframe from vibration and aids pilots in balancing the notoriously sensitive aircraft. During routine maintenance, Technicians take great care to remove complete engine covers and inserts to inspect fan blades, bearings, fuel nozzles, and wiring harnesses hidden deep within the tight nacelle. These engines are not installed until they have undergone extensive test cell testing. Test cells, also called hush houses, are designed to retain all the noise, heat, and fumes while running the engine hot on a test stand. First, the engine is attached to the test stand with all its wiring and cables needing attachment. This makes it possible for the personnel in the control room to exercise control over the engine while running a battery of tests. In the hush house, the F-118 can be run at its full power of 17,000 pounds of thrust. This engine does not have an afterburner. When the tests are completed, the engine is returned to the flight line. From jet engines to turboshaft engines, the U.S. Air Force flies the Sikorsky HH-60G Pavehawk and now the HH-60W Jolly Green II on combat search and rescue missions. Pavehawk is fitted with precision avionics vectoring equipment for accurate navigation. This helicopter has two General Electric T-700 GE-700 or 701C turboshaft engines producing 1,940 shaft horsepower each. With that power, the Pavehawk can fly up to 580 miles at 183 miles per hour, or a top speed of 222 miles per hour. To keep the Pavehawks flying, they require regular repairs, such as repairing combustion liners. Repairing the T-700 engine combustion liner requires precision welding to repair cracks or wear. Technicians first inspect and clean the lining. They replace damaged portions painstakingly using sophisticated welding processes like TIG to ensure no warping occurs. After welding, the liner is heat treated to recover material characteristics followed by a thorough inspection, including x-ray and dye penetrant tests. This is done to guarantee structural integrity and airworthiness before being reinstalled. Flight line pre-flight maintenance is critical. The HH-60G's maintenance includes frequent inspections and servicing engine parts like turbines and compressors. The engine is accessed by opening the engine cowls. Pre-flight taxi inspections include examining hydraulic systems, avionics and flight controls. Ground staff thoroughly inspect hoists, winches and cargo hooks, even though cargo hooks are not used that often with the Pavehawk. System diagnostics and functional checks certify the aircraft's readiness by confirming that all components are operational before flight. Freshwater engine washes are an important way of ensuring that helicopters are not damaged by the onset of corrosion. To prevent engine rust, aircraft must be washed with fresh water after flying within 10 miles of saltwater bodies. This is done directly after touchdown and requires the presence of the pilots and ground crew to accomplish well. 
After every flight day, when our birds touch down for the last time and we put our birds to bed, we have to make sure that we do a fresh water rinse on our engines to make sure that the saltwater environment doesn't corrode our engines internally. Pave hawks are expected to fly into hot zones to extract airmen who have been shot down. For this reason, they are heavily armed and equipped with a powerful rescue hoist. The survivor is tracked using the lightweight airborne radio system. These flights are conducted in close cooperation with pararescue men who fly with the crew on these missions. Once the downed pilots have been located, the PJs rescue them using the rescue hoist, which can lift 600 pounds. Two engines that change the world are the jet engine and the turbofan engines used by helicopters. Keeping this complicated machinery working takes skill and the best facilities in the industry. Dedicated men and women keep these engines working and thereby not only give the U.S. the offensive edge, but also help to save pilots who cost millions to train. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.